In Blazor, you can bind data to both components and DOM elements using the bind attribute. Data binding is one of the most powerful features of software development technologies because it serves as a connection bridge between views and the business logic in an application. In Blazor, we have three ways to bind data. The first way is the one way data binding, and as the name already indicates, it's when data flows in only one direction. It can be, for example, from your code section to the markup section or the other way around. The second way is the two way data binding, and in this case, the data flows in two ways. For example, it could be a field where you have data validation and you check for the data in real time. The third way is the event binding, and that's, for example, when you have a button click, an input change, etc. Now, let's go to Visual Studio and see event and data binding in action. In Visual Studio, go to the parent.razor components. Now, for demo purposes, I'll just remove the child related data, so I'll select the 14 to 8, and then press Ctrl KC to comment out this code and also the children array. So I'll just select everything in here and comment out all these lines. Let us start with an example of one way binding. For that, let us define a property inside the code section. So prop double tab. This is going to be of type string. I'm going to name this property the welcome message. And the value of this string is going to be ASP.NET Core Blazor App. For us to be able to use the welcome string just below the welcome message, I'll display another message inside an H1 tag. And that's going to be at welcome message. So in this case, we can see that we define the data inside the code section and we display it in the HTML markup section so the data is flowing in one way. So now let us save the changes and run the application. In here, I see that I get an error which says that it expects a semicolon, and that's right because I defined a value. And save the changes and press the play button one more time. So now in the browser, when you go to the welcome parent, you are going to see the text that we defined in the code section. Now let us see how the two way data binding works. For that, after the welcome message, we are going to define another parameter because we need to use the parameters to create the two way binding. So for that, just write parameter. This is going to be a property of type integer. And then I'm going to name it current value. And I'll set the current value to be zero. Now let us scroll up in here. We are going to define an input. And we are going to write in here that we want to bind this input to the current value parameter. So let us now save the changes and run the application to see the result. In here now we are going to see that we have a zero. So let us change this value. And nothing happens because we have not defined a placeholder where we want to display this data. So let us close the browser. Here after the input, I'll just write span. And then the text is going to be you entered. And in here I'll just show the current value. So let's run the app one more time. So by default, we have the you entered zero message. Let us change this to a number, let's say 23. But we see that even though we change the value from zero to 23, our data in here is not updated because for the value to be updated, we need to leave the input field. So when you click outside, we're going to see that the value is updated. Let us change it to 235. Now just leave the input and the value is updated. But what should you do if you want to update this value in real time? 
that's when the event binding comes into play. So let's go back to Visual Studio one more time. And inside the input, we are going to define the event. So I want to bind to the event and the input fields have the on input event. So what this means is that whenever the user types a value in this input, I want to bind the result to the current value, which then is shown in the current value in here. So let us run the app one more time. Now in here, if I type, let's say two, the value is updated in real time. So three, four, five, six, and we can see that whatever we type in here is reflected on the right. Another widely used event is the button click. And since we have an event, we are not going to create a new one. So when you go to counter, you have in here the click. So whenever you click this button, this value is updated in real time. So you can see that as I click, the value is increased. Now let's go to Visual Studio and see how this works. I'll just close the browser. In here, go to Solution Explorer and go to the counter.razor file. So the first thing that we have done is that we have defined a current count, which is set to zero. And we display the current count in here. Then in the button click me, we have defined the on click event, which is an event for buttons. And the method that we want to execute whenever the user clicks the button is the increment count. And here we have defined that the increment count will simply increment the value of the current count by one. And that's how the event binding works.